My name is Pastor Walter Davis IV. On the behalf of the officers and the members of the Monk's Grove Baptist Church, we like to thank you for allowing us to come into your home and share our worship service with you. So come on, let's go into service together. Your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. I want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace and mercy brought me through. Your grace, your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. Justice demanded that I should die. But grace and mercy said, oh no, oh no, no. We've already paid the price. You see, I once was blind. But thank God I can see it was because grace and mercy came along and rescued, rescued me, your grace brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. I just want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace. Brought me through your grace, brought me through. I'm living this moment, living this moment because of you. I just want to thank you and praise you to your grace and
Amen. Scripture reading will come from Isaiah chapter 43, beginning at verses 18. The word of the Lord reads, Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I have read Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his holy word. Our Father and our God, we come now in the name of Jesus to say thank you for this another day. This is a day that wasn't promised to us, even from January 1 all the way down to now, none of that was promised to us. But because we're here, we are here to say thank you. We're here to say thank you because of your loving kindness and your tender mercies. You have allowed us to be here to see a day we've never seen before. Father, we want to praise your name. We praise your name because of how good you are. We praise your name for your son, Jesus Christ. Because of Jesus Christ, we have a right to call you Father. So God, we just come to say thank you. And although God, we know that this is a different time, this is a different season, but God, you are the same. You're the same because you are from everlasting to everlasting. Father, we thank you this, this night we thank you for all the churches, Father, that normally would be a part of this fellowship. And they are part of it because they are watching us by way of face, Facebook or by way of live stream. But God, we know that we thank you for all of what you have put us all to be, and that is to be one body in the body of Christ. We thank you now, God, because we realize that you've been good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And God, we thank you also for being a healer. We ask you now to heal this land. Ask you to remember all of those that are suffering from that of being infected by this pandemic. Father, so much has happened in 2020. God, there's been many pandemics from social injustices to so many different things. But God, through it all, we can say you're still in control. You're still in control because God, you told us that heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will stand forever. Oh, Father, we're here tonight at the Moss Grove Baptist Church giving you glory, honor, and praise. And, Father, as we prepare now to leave from this plateau, going into the next plateau, we know you will be right there with us because you said you will never leave us nor forsake us. Father, remember all of those families that are in bereavement right now. Remember them in a special way. And, God, we ask you now, those that are sick, Father, so many families, God, we know that you're able to pick up a bow down head. Because Father we read your record. We read your record where you went to others Father. Along the way through your son Jesus Christ. And Father you told them that. You are the way the truth and the light. And to be of good cheer. For you've already overcome the world. And for that we know we are overcomers tonight. But God we're here tonight. We're here tonight Father representing the four churches together. But God we thank you for the man that you have placed in this vineyard, Father, Pastor Davis. And we thank you for the one that will come forth tonight to break the word of life. Break, give him a word, Lord. Thank you for the word you've given to him, God, but now anoint him afresh to stand and proclaim your gospel. For now is a needed time. We need your word. We need your word, Father, to bring about that of healing in the land. We know, God, there is power in the name of Jesus Christ, your son. So, God, have your way. Even we're few in numbers, but we know you're here tonight because you said where two or three are gathered in my name. You said you would be right there. So God, we thank you tonight for being in our presence. We thank you tonight and we give you glory. Father, this might be our last time, but God, we're going to give you praise because we realize, Father, nobody deserves it but you because from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. Father, we praise you and we bless your name. Have your way now, God. Move in this worship setting. And we'll be so careful 
to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. For it's in the majestic name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen again. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will make a boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear of and be glad therein. Who will magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. We greet you in the name of our Father, Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank those that have tuned in with us this evening for our New Year's Eve service. Five churches, five pastors one location, serving one God. Hallelujah. Listen, what I'm asking you to do, I'm asking everyone that's on right now, go on and hit the share button, hit the share button. Don't be stingy tonight, but share the service, share the word of God with someone that's on your page, so others that is on your page that may not be saved, because we all have those friends on our pages that aren't saved can get the word of God tonight. So please share. Please hit your share button. As a matter of fact, I need to go down and do that myself. So please, please share tonight's service. I'm honored to have tonight um, my friend and my brother, first of all, Pastor Wilson, and then Pastor McDowell's absence, and then Pastor Durham's absence. Pastor McDowell, Pastor Smith Chapel, he had surgery, so he's home resting. Pastor Amos Durham, Pastor Ridgeville, he is on, I believe, vacation. And then also happy to have Dr. Reverend Dr. Antoine Yao, who is going to be the preacher for tonight. And so it's an honor and a privilege to have the brethren and the churches to come together one more time to celebrate the goodness of the Lord, of keeping us all through the havoc that we've come through in 2020 as we get ready to walk into 2021. So after the, after the choir sings, or the praise team sings, the two or three of them, amen, after they finish singing, the next voice you will hear standing here in this place is the proud pastor of the Holden Chapter Baptist Church, Spartanburg, South Carolina, Reverend Dr. Antoine Yao. Now what I want to do really, really quick before we get in, because you know you can't have service, amen, and not be a part of service, and this is where everybody can participate is we're going to take up a good old-fashioned love offering. Us. Amen. So everybody can participate on this part here. If you're watching on the web page, then all you have to do is look up into the top corner and click Give. Give now, and that'll take you to our Give Lafay page, and then you can give your offering there. If you're watching live on Facebook, then you can go to Give Lafay and click Give, and it'll take you straight to uh, our page, but please, please, on tonight, we're asking everybody that's on the page, everybody that's watching, to participate in giving a good old-fashioned offering, amen. This is the last time of the year that you may be able to give unto the Lord, and so please, please, come on, do your best tonight, and give uh, your offering, your love offering tonight, amen. So one more time, you can go. To our, you can go on the web page, look up into the corner, click on Give Now, or on Facebook, just help, go to Givelify and type in Monks Grove Baptist Church and hit Give Now. And if you're on YouTube, same thing, just hit Give Now, and it'll take you straight to the Givelify app. All right? All right. Come on, y'all. Let's...
Just the other day, I heard a man say he didn't believe in God's word. But I can truly say the Lord has made a way, cause he never failed me yet. We've come this far by faith. Amen. God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for this opportunity to come and to share with these, your people, a word from the Lord. We pray, God, and ask that you will humble me and hide me behind the cross so men will not see me because even on my best day, Lord, I've discovered that the text was true when it said that I'm nothing but a filthy rag. So I pray, God, that you speak through me so that the people may hear a word from you. Now, God, let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable in thine sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is in your name we do pray. Amen. In the book of Psalms tonight, Psalms 37, Psalms 37, I wish to encourage you with a word from the Lord. Amen. We are indeed blessed and privileged to be standing in the midst of this awesome church, Monk's Grove, and their awesome pastor, Pastor Davis. Amen. Soon to be the Reverend Dr. Davis. We thank you for sharing with us, as well as this collective group of churches that come together year after year to celebrate the coming of a new year together. Amen. Psalms 37, verse number one. I want you to be patient with me tonight. Verse number one says, don't be worried. I'm going to read that again. Verse number one says, don't be worried. Psalms 37, chapter num verse number seven. Psalms 37, verse number seven. It says, be still. Be still. Verse one said, don't be worried. Verse seven says, to be still. Verse 24 says, and even though you trip up, you will not fall on your face because he uh, holds you by the hand. Verse 25 says, throughout my life, my whole life, both young and old, I've never witnessed God forsaking those who do right, nor have I seen their children begging for crumbs. I want to take for a few minutes the idea in topic form. Don't worry. Be still. You may trip, but be encouraged. Now, I know we are here tonight and we are ministering to you via social media, the church Facebook page and uh, the church web page. But if you can help the preacher tonight and share with somebody these words, don't worry. Be still. You may trip but be encouraged. What better 
phrase to leave 2020 and enter into 2021 other than these words from David. Don't worry. Be still. I wish I had a witness. You may trip, but be encouraged. My brothers and sisters, David is now in the sunset of his life. He's already experienced many ups and many downs. His life has been like a roller coaster filled with turns and twists that brought to his life both joy, pleasure, tears, and even fear. If it was left up to those of us here, those of us online, if we were going through the exact same thing that David had to endure, Pastor, a lot of us would have thrown in the towel. But my brothers and sisters, David is sharing a word for you and I. But my brothers and sisters, unfortunately, if it were left up to the modern day spiritual measuring stick, David would not have even had the opportunity to pick up a pen and put on paper the words that God was encouraging him to write. Be honest with you, if it was uh, left up to us, a lot of us would not even want David's name to be in the book. Because David was low down. Oh, somebody help me tonight. David was dirty. And David was even nasty. If you can put him together, uh, some of us would say that David was low down, dirty, and nasty. But my brothers and sisters, he wasn't perfect. He was flawed. I'm talking to somebody. He was, he was flawed. David, David had lust in his eyes. The Bible declared, the, the record that one day David was looking out the window and a woman by the name of Bathsheba was taking her noonday bath on the roof and he lusted after her. Lust simply means to desire something that's not yours and belong to somebody else. Can I just stick a pin in it right here? Because I see people talking about David. I see people laughing at David. I see people criticizing David. But David has not been the only one that had lust in his eyes. He was a con man because he lured Bathsheba away from her bath, away from her home, not only into his house, but David some kind of way conned this married woman in his bed. He was a murderer. He sent her husband to be slaughtered at the hands of the enemy. But even with all of the mess, that David had in his life. The good book called David. I'm talking about a man of ill reproach, a man who started off as a shepherd boy. The good book called David, a man after God's own heart. And I want to, I just want to tell somebody, you, 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 you can, you can strive to be perfect. You can shoot for the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. But every now and then, uh, you're going to fall. Every now and then, uh, you're going to stumble. But that does not mean God can use you. 
And I wonder, is there anybody here that glad, that's glad that God still can use us? That glad, glad that God still can look at our faults and look beyond our needs and still use us. If you were real today, there are some folk in the pulpit, preach about yourself uh, that shouldn't be here. There are some folk in the choir stand that shouldn't be there. There are some folk on the usher ministry. There are some people walking around with the camera that if the world has to judge. Okay, all right. I'm, I'll leave you alone. David, the scripture allowed David to be an eyewitness to the fact that God can use us. This David with a pen in his hand, help me somebody, is relaying a message to us from God that regardless of what life throws at you, help me somebody, regardless of what life throws at you, uh, you still uh, should rely on the Lord. Can I tell you something about, about the Lord? You can trust him. When is there anybody here ever had to trust him? You, you, not only can you trust him, but you can depend on him. You can, you can lean on him. You can allow him to fight your battle. You can believe in him. You can take God at his word because scripture declares before one word of God comes back void. Heaven and earth, oh, help me, will pass away. His word says, I'll never leave you. One, is there anybody here ever felt like you was by yourself? Has anybody here ever felt like you was walking all by yourself? Can I tell you something? The mere fact that you were walking should let you know that God is with you. That's why every now and then I may be by myself. I may be driving. I just cry out, Emmanuel. I know it looked like I'm by myself. I know it looked like I can't pull it by myself. But God got me. <laughs> and so it is here. In the benediction of David's life. That David leaves. A word that the spirit of the Lord revealed to me that can help us in the benediction of 2020. A word that can encourage those of us uh, that have been through a year where it seems as if we cry more than we rejoice. You know, that was a song a few years ago that everybody used to love the same. Uh, and they, they said, I've had some good days. And I've had some bad days. And all of my good days outweigh my bad days. But if you turn back and look at the last 365 days of 2020, it, it, it behooves me to say that this year it appears that our bad days outweighed our, our good days. Now, that may not be your story. That may not be your testimony. You may be all sanctified and say, no, pastor, every day was a good day to me. But I cried this year. I've lost some loved ones that, that I prayed would never go anywhere. I, I've had some bad days. It, it's been dark in 2020. One is there anybody here that can witness and say, it's been dark in 2020. The sun didn't always shine. It was some rain on some days when there wasn't a cloud in the sky. Yes, sir. I'm sure you can agree. That 2020 was an interesting year. It was an interesting year in the life of the church. Church had to find herself doing what uh, we had never done before. Telling folk not to come to the house of God. Telling people not to shake each other's hand. Not to give each other brotherly love. Going against everything that Acts did. Remember in the book of Acts, the Bible said, after Pentecost had came, they showed up at the church every day to lift up the name of Jesus and to encourage one another. 2020 have put the church in a strain. Brothers and sisters, not only 
Has it been an interesting year for the church? It's been an interesting year for our families. People dying right and left. Burying people that, that you love. Burying, people burying mothers and fathers and grandmothers and grandfathers and spouses and children. Now, folk been dying everywhere. I got so sick of CNN, I stopped looking at the number of deaths that have happened in the United States this year. Because it grieves my spirit of all other people. That's mourning. That's crying. There, there's been some of us that have mourned in 2020. Some of us have cried in 2020. Some of us have gotten depressed in 2020. Families have broken up in 2020. Not only the church and the family have had an interesting year, but also individuals. People who have been sick with this virus called COVID-19 that have had to lay in ICUs on life support, not being able to have their family come in and visit them. Can I tell you a bad position to be in is the position of you being sick on your bed of afflictions and the ones that you love can't hold your hand, can't look in your eyes and tell you that everything is going to be all right. It's a bad place to be. Not only our church and family individuals, the country, it has even gone through things. Brothers and sisters, the country have seen her fair share of heartbreak, hurts, and disappointments. There's jobs everywhere, my brothers and sisters, that have closed their doors. They can no longer pay uh, people their wages because they're bankrupt and, and not only are they bankrupt the ones in Congress that can that can help them out a bit they're playing politics oh, y'all don't want to help me what can six oh, I'm going to leave that alone I ain't going to talk about it. what what can can six hundred dollars do uh, I wonder if they wasn't making their hundred and seventy six thousand dollars a year with perfect health insurance and be able to fly everywhere they want to fly for free I wonder how much money they would want if they was a janitor if they was somebody that was working in the school I wonder how much money they would want uh, if they were a uh, uh, garbage oh y'all want to help me tonight brothers and sisters it's been an interesting year but do understand that we are not the first ones to have to go through many of life's battles remember uh, in uh, the beginning of the word of God the children of Israel uh, they they was in battle in Egypt they was in battle there and they were working from sun up to sundown and the text says that they were crying and tears were rolling down their face and the same one that saved them that told Moses go down there and tell Pharaoh to let my people go and then tell my children I've seen their tears. I've heard their cries. Uh, they had to go through a battle. The Hebrew boys, uh, because they wouldn't bow down to an idol god, uh, had to go through a battle. They had to be hooked up in the fiery furnace. Uh, but while they were walking in the fiery furnace, uh, the same one uh, that can deliver us uh, was there in the furnace. If you don't believe me, the Bible says uh, that when they look inside, uh, they say, wait a minute, we put three men in there, but I see a fool's man and it looks to me when is there anybody here ever been walking uh, and somebody saw somebody walking beside you uh, they was trying to figure out how you made it uh, and it was the one that was walking with you the crazy man that was at the graveyard <laughs> he had to go through a battle with demons in his head he was going so crazy that they had to put him up in chains. And every time they put him in chains, Dr. Davis, uh, he broke the chains off of him. Uh, he was so crazy that he picked up stones off the ground uh, and started cutting himself with. Uh, but when the Lord rode up on the shore, this crazy man ran down to the shore and the same one that can deliver us uh, drove the demons out of him. Uh, we are not the only one uh, that had to go through something. 
Mary had to go through a battle when the Spirit said that she would conceive a child when she was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. Uh, Mary had to really worry about what church folk were going to I'm going to be quiet right here. Folk then start logging off of Facebook. Uh, can I just be honest with you? Uh, church folk sometimes uh, will treat you worse uh, than the folk in the world. If you don't believe me, go, go to the club tonight club tonight if you're gonna go to the club tonight everybody be dancing and have you ever went to the club and you were sharp and and before you went to the club you had worked all week and on friday when you got your check you went out to the mall and bought you a pair of 200 tennis shoes and now they look good and you out at the club and you look good our, our ladies you got on your red bottoms and you got on your nice dresser and you looking good and you know you don't walk the same when you when you know you're looking good you have a dap with your personality or you slang your hair from side to side but at the club they can be dressed up and down. Uh, somebody step on their shoe. Uh, guess what? They probably going to get into a fight. Uh, but guess what's going to happen next Friday? They going to be right back in the club, uh, shaking it fast, dropping it hot, uh, showing them what they're working with. Uh, but if you're in the church, Somebody wear the same dress that you wear. Somebody sit beside you. Somebody sing your song on the choir. You move your membership. Mary had to go through a battle because Mary was worried about what the church was going to say. Mary wasn't the only one to go through a battle, even Jesus. Jesus was perfect. He came into the world to save mankind. But even this perfect Jesus had to go through. He was healing folk, giving sight to the blind. And the very ones that was walking with him were the ones that betrayed him. But all oh, my brothers on the third day, he got up. And because he got up, you should have faith to believe that regardless of what you're going through, the Lord will make it all right. But tonight, that was just my introduction, y'all. Tonight, in this battle called life, David had uh, an experience. And through his experience in life, David penned Psalms 37. And in Psalm 37, there are three things I want to point out to you. There are three things I want to point out to you on the heels of losing George Floyd. There are three things I want to point out to you uh, uh, and allow you to remember what happened to Breonna Taylor, to Ahmaud Arbery, to, to the fact that, that some of our jobs closed down. Oh, help me somebody. To, to, to the fact that some of us lost loved ones. David gives us a point in Psalms 37 and 1. David said, don't be worried. In other words, he said, don't worry. That was a song a few years ago. Uh, some of us may be young enough and old enough to remember. It says, don't worry, be happy. David starts off Psalm 37 in the benediction of his life by saying, don't worry. My brothers and sisters, that's something uh, that you got to take with you uh, into, the tw into uh, 2021. Uh, you got to take with you the word, uh, don't worry. There's a lot of us worrying uh, about something that God uh, is in control of. And can I tell you something about that? Uh, God is in control uh, of everything. Don't you know the sun uh, can't rise if God tell it to stand still? Don't you know the wind can't blow uh, if God doesn't permit it to? Uh, so if God is controlling everything, uh, stop worrying. The text tells us, uh, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. I, I, I know, how, Pastor, how can you say not to worry and the pandemic is at all time high? How can you say not to worry and they promised us 200, I mean, 20 million vaccinations uh, by December the 31st uh, and we ain't even got 5 million yet? Uh, I tell you how not to worry because a vaccination uh, can cure you from disease, uh, but the blood of the Lord. 
Oh, somebody don't understand me tonight. The old church used to say, uh, there's something about the blood of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Do you hear the old hymn? What can wash? Oh, I wish I had a witness. Away my sin. Nothing but, but the blood. I said, don't worry. Don't, don't worry about what's going on. Don't, don't worry. I, I didn't say don't be safe. You don't, don't, don't go out to the malls and all these other places with no mask on and, and no, you ain't sa- washing your hands and sanitizing your hands. Uh, take precautions uh, as it relates to COVID-19. Uh, but don't worry about what's going to happen uh, because God going to take care of the situation. Don't you know if he can send plagues, he can also send the cure. Oh, somebody missed that tonight. If, if he can send plagues and locusts down into Egypt, don't you know that he can, he can shake the mind of an individual that's in a lab somewhere and say, here, that ain't no, just no, that ain't no, just no uh, shot, but that what, that can cure everybody. David said, don't worry. Second thing is he tells us in verse number seven, he says, be still. So, Lord, why should I not worry? And now you're telling me to be still. David spoke to me and said, yeah, God was saying to you. He said, be still because uh, sometimes you will try to get in front of God. Sometimes you will try to work something out that God uh, already got a solution to. And the fact that you try to work it out, uh, you won't do anything uh, but make it worse. Is there anybody here tonight, anybody watching on live ever tried to do something that you know you didn't have the skill to do? Sometimes uh, you need to call the professionals. If, you, if, if you're not a plumber, you, you better leave them pipes alone. If you're not an electrician, you better, you better stop playing with them red wires and them green wires. Your hair going to end up like mine. Sometimes you got to call the professional. And what I've learned in 2020, that this thing that's going on in 2020, an amateur can't fix. And if an amateur can't fix it, you might as well sit down uh, and pick up your iPhone uh, and call Dr. Jesus uh, and say, Dr. Jesus, we done messed up all year long. Uh, We done called on everybody but you. Uh, We done put it in the hands of Fauci and and all the other doctors. We we even trust the president to do what he said. Uh, And Lord, I repent, but in 2021, uh, Lord, I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to be still and I'm going to wait on you. Uh, and is there anybody here ever had uh, a moment of waiting on him? Uh, the old church said uh, he might not come when you want him to come, uh, but oh, surely he gonna come on time. He, My professor said uh, in, at the United Theological Seminary, he said he may not come when you want him to come, but when he come, you gonna want him. Somebody missed that. Don't worry, y'all. Be still. In the midst of being still, David said, y'all, I got something to tell you. He said, you may trip. A lot, a lot of folk, that, that's the quiet part in the text. What you mean? You, you're telling me not to worry. You're telling me be, you, to be still and trust in the Lord. But now you're telling me that I may s- slip? You, you, you're telling me that I may trip up? The good news about tripping in the text, as David declares to us, he said, you may trip. You may have to go through a season of being down. You may have to go through a season of of having to make sure that you manage your money right because change, money is short and change is strange. But David is saying, you ain't going to fall. Y'all don't hear me in the text. He said, you may trip. But you will not fall on your face. And I know somebody asking a question. Uh, how is it that I not fall? It's not because you got good balance. It's because David said the hand of the Lord. Oh, help me somebody is the one that's holding you. That's why I'm not depending on the $600. Uh, I'm not depending. 
depending on the two thousand dollars uh, and a whole lot of people that's mad because they ain't got it yet uh, they shouldn't depend on it neither because some of them as soon as it hit one hand uh, is gonna go out the other hand uh, and the six hundred dollars uh, it really ain't gonna help you uh, if you buy tennis shoes and get your hair done uh, and put nails on your finger my brothers and sisters uh, so that is not what I'm trusting on but I'm trusting that I'm in his hand and even if I slip even though I had to go through things in 2020 even though the economy was not like I wanted it to be and there were some things in my life that didn't shape out the way that I wanted them to shape out even though I tripped I didn't fall even though there was countless of thousands of people that have died across the country brothers and sisters we still can say we didn't fall. We may have cried some nights. We may have turned the lights off and refused uh, to answer our phone, uh, but we didn't fall. I mean, I don't ma it doesn't matter how strong the situation may be uh, because the text says that God got you in his hands. Uh, you don't have to worry about it because his hands are too strong uh, for somebody to pull something out of. Uh, ah, let me hurry up. So now, benediction. David said, throughout, through my whole life, both young and old, from the time that I was playing in the field, yeah, from the time that I was playing in the field, throwing rocks at the sheep, running behind them, God was taking care of me. David said, when I was playing with my friend, Jonathan, yeah, Saul's son. Jonathan uh, realized that David, um, he realized that Saul had got upset with David because people were cheering. Saul have killed thousands. But David have killed tens of thousands. He got mad at him. But the same God that took care of him when he was young took care of him, yeah, when he was a middle-aged man. Wish I had a witness here of somebody that can testify tonight on your timeline. That I once was young, but now I'm old. Yeah, King James said, but never have I seen the righteous forsaken. But brothers and sisters, 2020 is coming to an end. And can I tell you something? A lot of us should shout. Simply because we don't look like <laughs> what we had to go through. Wish I had a witness tonight. Yeah, I know it's been dark in 2020. I know that you've had to cry some nights. Just like David had to cry. I, I know that in 2020, some of your bank accounts went down. Some of you were laid off of your job and was depending on the money that was coming uh, in unemployment. And even the government uh, let you down. But aren't you glad tonight that you can have the same testimony that David has? David wasn't testifying about what Caesar gave him. David was not testifying on how the army took care of him and protected him from danger seen and unseen. David, <laughs> yes, was testifying uh, about uh, the goodness of uh, of the Lord and don't fool me now but is there anybody here tonight uh, watching on our uh, social media that you don't mind uh, what somebody else uh, might say about you uh, you don't mind uh, that somebody else may uh, criticize you uh, and uh, if you don't mind uh, Will you help me preach tonight? Uh, say yes! 
2020 was rough. Uh, yes! 2020 had me with my back against the wall. Uh, yes! 2020 had me uh, where I felt like I was stuck uh, in between uh, a rock and a hard place. Uh, but all year long, uh, God uh, kept on uh, keeping me. Uh, say yes, somebody. Uh, if the Lord uh, been keeping you uh, and you're not afraid uh, to be a witness, uh, tell somebody uh, the Lord uh, made a way out of no way. Uh, there may have been times uh, in 2020 uh, where uh, there was not enough food. Uh, Won't the Lord uh, rain down manna from heaven? Uh, there was a time uh, when uh, your money was short uh, and your bills were tall. Uh, Won't the Lord uh, make a way out of no way? Uh, say yes, yeah, somebody. Uh, I once was young. Uh, but now I'm old, uh, but never have I seen uh, the righteous forsaken. Uh, who is the righteous one? Uh, those of us uh, that's been baptized uh, in the blood of Jesus. Uh, I didn't say the perfect one. Uh, I said the righteous one, uh, and I'm so glad uh, the one that got up uh, on Sunday morning uh, is the one uh, that's taking care of me. Uh, because if I uh, depend on uh, Mitch McConnell uh, to take care of me, uh, I'm in a bad position. Uh, if I depend uh, on Donald Trump uh, to take care of me. Uh, I'm in a bad position. Uh, I'd be in the same position uh, that Elijah was in uh, when the prophets of Baal uh, was on Mount Carmel uh, and the prophets of Baal uh, was calling on their God. Yes, uh, I heard somebody say uh, they called on Baal uh, all night long, all day long. Uh, and Elijah uh, standing there looking at him, uh, making fun at him. Uh, your God got eyes uh, and cannot see. Uh, your God got ears uh, and cannot hear. Uh, but I'm so glad uh, I'm not like uh, the prophets of Baal. Uh, but I fall uh, closer to Elijah. Elijah. Uh, stood behind the altar, rebuilt the altar, dug a trench all around the altar, poured seven pails of water on the altar. That is a question. Remember, there was a drought in the land. So my question is, where in the world did Elijah get the water from? And when he got finished drenching the water on the altar, why did he do it? He did it because he didn't want nobody to think he was performing a, a magic trick uh, when he got the, uh, the altar ready. Uh, the Bible said uh, Elijah uh, called on his name. Uh, and if there anybody here today uh, at the end of 2020, uh, can you help me uh, call his name? Uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus. Uh, Grandmama said, uh, he's my wheel uh, in the wheel of the wheel. Uh, Jesus, uh, my rock. Uh, in a weary land, Jesus, my shelter in a time of storm. The songwriter said, there's something about the name of Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. Bye-bye, 2020, you had your fun. But this year, I've learned that I'm not going to worry. I'm going to be still. And even if I trip, everything going to be all right. Say yes, uh, tag somebody uh, and let them know uh, that it's going to be all right. Uh, why do I know uh, it's going to be all right? Uh, because David said uh, in Psalm 30 and 5, uh, weeping uh, may endure for a night, uh, but joy, uh, joy, uh, joy, uh, joy, uh, joy, joy. It's gonna come in the morning. It's gonna come in the morning. We'll celebrate with me tonight. Uh, 
We just celebrate with me tonight uh, and just call his name. Uh, I remember in the sanctified church, uh, we used to have something uh, called a terrorist service. Uh, people would come down to the altar, uh, fall on their knees, uh, and they wouldn't say a long prayer. The only thing they would say uh, was Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus. Uh, can I give you uh, the kryptonite uh, for 2020? Uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus. Uh, at the name of Jesus, uh, demons will run away from you. Uh, at the name of Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh, somebody say Jesus. Uh, type in your pad, uh, Jesus. Uh, if you want folk to leave you alone, uh, Jesus. Uh, won't he do it? Uh, won't he make a way out of no way? Uh, say yes. Uh, say yes. Uh, Yes, uh, I cried too much last year. I mourned too loud much last year. I weep too much last year. Jesus, there's joy in his name. Jesus, uh, there's happiness in his name. Jesus, uh, there's comfort in his name. Yes. Don't worry. Don't worry. Be still. You may trip, but be encouraged. Don't worry. Be still. You may trip, but be encouraged. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use We do want to thank you tonight Lord, for joining us on live stream. This collaborative me. of churches that have come together to fellowship. As you celebrate the new year tonight, we do Take encourage you to enjoy hand, Lord, those that are in your home. But be safe. COVID-19 is real. Touch my heart Make sure that you're safe tonight. Make sure you're driving safe tonight. You know as well as I know that police are everywhere. Be safe. Be safe. Let us pray, God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for allowing us to come together, even in the midst of this pandemic allowing us to come together and lifting you up. God, as we worship tonight, we don't forget those who've lost loved ones. We don't forget those who have been put in positions where they didn't know what was going to keep them. We pray now, God, that you comfort us. We pray, God, that you wipe the tears from our eyes of 2020 and restore the joy of our salvation. And now God, as we leave tonight, we ask that you give us traveling grace and mercy. Be with us until we meet again. In the streets that we live in, God, let the words of our mouth, the meditations of our heart, be acceptable in thine sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It's in your son Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.